This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back. This is Jay Fidel with Research of Manoa. I'm wearing my hat, my cat's delicatessen hat because it's raining so hard. And my umbrella broke when I took my morning walk today and I got so wet, I couldn't believe it. It was, wow. so, it was so wet in my neighborhood and it was, water was raging down the street. It was awful. Uh, in fact, it cut our walk short today. Oh, okay. That's Dennis Wan. Uh, Dennis is with uh, the faculty at uh, UH Sea Grant College uh, program, which is affiliated with NOAA. That's right. So you're, you're a Fed, aren't you? Yeah. S state. <laughs> and today we're going to take stock. It couldn't be a more appropriate time to take stock of what's going on with um, our current uh, Olivia. Um, but also, we also want to connect up and see uh, what does uh, uh, Olivia have to do um, with Florence on the East Coast okay. and with um, all the other hurricanes that are going on in the world. So um, we're going to divide the show in two parts. One is we're going to take a status report on what's happening outside, and the other is we're going to connect up a sort of a global connection of um, all these hurricanes and climate change. Okay. Welcome again to the show, Dennis. Thank you, Jay. It's good to be back. And um, it's an appropriate time. There's a lot of activity going on right now. Yeah. A lot of things to learn from what's going on. Yeah, isn't that true? Yeah. It's like, you know, you always want to learn from every, every calamity and for that matter, every extreme storm so we can do better the next time. That's yeah. right. And um, today we, we're going to have some pictures for Lawrence, Aniki, Lane, and Olivia. We'll cover all of those. We'll show you some uh, relationships that I think may be important for your listeners or uh, viewers and a um, uh, lot of things to go over. Yeah. Okay. Well, first you have, you have some pictures and by, by those pictures we can take a closer look at what's going on with Olivia right now in, in Hawaii. So take it away, Dennis. Okay. So, uh, well, actually, why don't we go to the first picture then? And we're actually going to go to Florence because this is a, this is a typical graph It'll, from the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. They'll produce this on the East Coast for um, the systems there and also in Hawaii uh, for the Pacific. And it's very important that your readers know how to ha understand this graph. Okay, so that white cone is your cone of uncertainty. Okay, so a lot of people have been exposed to that. They may not realize that that cone uh, supposed to represent 67% accuracy. So where that X is, this is, by the way, Hurricane Florence, and it was just taken a few hours ago uh, for the National Weather Service report for the, in the Atlantic. And um, where that X is, where the center of the hurricane is, and anywhere, that cone represents uh, the cone of uncertainty with a 67% accuracy. That means that there's still a 30% or 33% chance that the eye could go outside of that cone, anywhere in, along that cone. And then the other thing to note is um, the dark brown is where the extent of the hurricane force winds. It's, it's a very large system, uh, Florence. It's, uh, right now it's a category 320 mile per hour sustained winds. And the, um, the diameter for the light brown circle is, um, is over several hundred miles in diameter. And what's important that you note is um, if, even if the eye goes in the cone or outside of the cone, the extent of the hurricane force winds and the tropical storm winds are going to go way outside of that. So for instance, say the eye goes, makes landfall near the northern part of the cone, mm -hmm. the hurricane winds and the tropical storm winds could affect Virginia or, uh, or further north. And if the eye were to go along the south, southern border of that cone, the uh, tropical storm winds could affect Georgia or Florida. So it's very important to understand 
what that cone represents and also um, you know realize that this is a relatively new product I just National Weather Service has started doing this. The cone of uncertainty. The cone of uncertainty combined with the wind fields. The wind fields are the, 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 the brown blob, dark brown blob, and the lighter blob, mm. which represent hurricane force winds and uh, tropical storm force winds. So mm. it's very important to realize that you could get impacts outside of the cone. Very important to um, always follow National Weather Service. Where is the M? There was these okay. black the, dots. What is that? M the M represent? stands for major hurricane. Okay, so when it and then when it it's um, uh, category three, four, or five. One or two is hurricane, and then you'll see sometimes it'll convert to an S, where it means it's a tropical storm. So okay, yeah. you can so, learn a lot from that. To, yes, uh, it's important because um, a lot of people think I'm outside of the cone. I don't need to worry, but that's not the case. And they need to have always, always uh, listen to TV and radio. Always, you know, uh, listen for the updates. And usually, the National Weather Service has six-hour updates: 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 5 p.m., 11 p.m. Mm. Okay. So you you should be watching the cone, but. It, uh in each one of these reports, because it changes and everything. Right, it's going to change. If yeah. you're outside of the cone, you're safe. No, you're still there. Still, could be risk involved. Um, you know, it's better to be outside of the cone than inside the cone. But you still need to have be alert and want, monitor what's going on. Okay. You said this was a Category Three. Yes. Uh, off uh, what the Carolinas, um, and it's a. Did you say it was? 120 sustained? 120 mile per hour sustained That's ones. That's pretty it, serious. That would yeah. do, if that came ashore in Hawaii, that would do a lot of damage, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, actually, maybe we should go to the next slide because um, uh, we'll show exactly what, what, what could yeah, happen. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So why don't we go to the next slide? Okay. So this is a Niki making landfall on Kauai as a Category 4 hurricane. It actually, at the time, it had 120 mile per hour sustained winds, just like Florence now. But the winds were amplified because it was moving so, moving so far, moving uh, forward so fast, like the forward movement, like 20 miles per hour, mm -hmm. added to 112, 120 miles per hour rotational speed, gave you the 140 mile per hour wind speed. Um, when it made landfall. So it was actually a category three or four when Aniki made landfall. But the key thing to note is if Aniki had turned north six hours earlier, instead of impacting Kauai, it would have hit Oahu. And instead of damaging six or 7,000 structures, it could have damaged 50,000 structures or damage or destroy 50,000 structures. That's confirmed in a risk assessment. A lot of people do not realize how vulnerable Oahu is. And, and when we, when we um, saw this information, actually this is, this is really a, one of the main reasons that spurred us to do the homeowner's handbook. Because realize there's so many people that are vulnerable and they, not, they don't really understand the risk that's involved and all the different ways they could do to try and protect themselves. So uh, this is, you know, th this is very uh, instructive about what could happen. So you say vulnerable. What, what do you mean by vulnerable? Certainly there's going to be a multiple of mm, 10 times as many structures, both uh, office structures and... and um and residential structures right. in Oahu, as in, say, Kauai. Uh, is, that, is that what you mean by vulnerable? Or is it infrastructure, where some of those structures actually are providing infrastructure to the community, and if you break them, then all the structures become, you know, deprived? Yeah. Well, it's both. I mean, because we're talking primarily about structures here, like houses and buildings, uh, but the infrastructure is going to be impacted also. And by vulnerable, we mean that it's exposed. So it's exposed 
to the storm surge, the, the rain, and the wind, okay? Uh, not as only it is exposed, but there, it's sensitive to these impacts because like some of the buildings are old, you know, so they won't withstand, very, uh, withstand the forces very well. That's what we mean by vulnerable. There's exposure, there's uh, sensitivity to these um, potential impacts, and um, uh, you know, it, it's, that's really the worst case, almost the worst case scenario. Is for it us. fair to say that a, a more densely populated area is always more vulnerable than a less densely populated area? Yes, because they have more exposure. Yeah, it's, it's, the, um, it's the number of structures that are, essentially, Oahu has eight times more structures than Kauai. So if you have six or 7,000 houses damaged or destroyed on Kauai, multiply that by eight. That's, that's where we get roughly the 50,000. Uh, and then there's still other things like impact infrastructure, power lines, roads, trees, you know, other things. Yeah, for that it, matter, yeah. services that supply the neighbor islands. Right. So if you have damage to centralized services of any kind in Oahu, that's going to have a secondary effect on neighbor islands. Right. right. So let's see some more of your pictures. Then. Okay. So can we get the next picture? Okay. So this is Lane. And really, um, we had three systems. I, we do a lot of outreach in, in throughout the state over the last 10 years. And the people that we find the most difficult to reach are on Oahu. It's not, be, it's not related to like the, 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 how the, gov, the county agencies are formed, the, the emergency management structure or anything like that. We think it's related more like just the fact that people on Oahu are more urbanized in a way. They're, they think more about business, maybe they're less in tune with nature, but they seem to be the le least prepared and um, or take preparation the most lightly. Mm. So um, um, here's Lane and here's, it's, you see M, it's a major category. Hurricane, this is just as strong as Florence is right now at this point in time. And it's start, it's, it, it has a projection to curve and threaten the Hawaiian Islands and, and especially Oahu. Okay, now if it were not for the shear, remember the, the system got sheared off? Yeah, the and trade then it, winds. Yeah. yeah, and then the trade winds pushed the bottom of the hurricane to the west. Okay, but um, that's what happened. But potentially, if there was no shear, the system would have continued north as a pretty strong hurricane threatening Oahu and the other islands. So here you have like two scenarios that happened. One is what actually happened, which Lane was a non-event for a lot of people on Oahu. And they may say, oh, there's not going to be any impact. There's no need to prepare. The other scenario is something similar to Aniki, where the system curves north and hits Surprise. Oahu as a major as a strong hurricane and tens of thousands of structures are damaged. And all of a sudden, people, something like this could happen in a matter of a day or two, you know, depending on the scenario, people will be caught off surprise. That's why people really got to understand the risk. There is risk out there and they really got to be proactive about preparing. Mm. They just can't prepare for lane, or Olivia, they need to, all their preparations need to be for the short term, but extrapolated into the long term so that it, so that it, it, um, it goes into 2019, for instance. And I'll, we'll explain what's, we'll explain a, a, shortly about that, why that's important. Yeah, okay. All right, are we ready for our break then, Dennis? Sure. If you, you want to take another picture, we can. Oh, sure, well, let's take another picture. Okay, well, and here is, um, here's Olivia. This was taken just a few hours ago, released from the National Weather Service. And again, you see the cone of uncertainty. The um, 
uh, the center of the tropical storm is over Maui now. It's already made landfall on Maui and Lanai. And here's, where, here's why it's important to see the wind field. Do you see the light brown circle, yeah. the wind field? Yeah. That shows that even though Oahu looks like it's outside the cone of uncertainty, yeah. they still project tropical storm, some type of tropical storm winds uh, for Oahu. What are we talking about, 60, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour? No, not that high. Uh, uh, in this case, over 39 miles per hour, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, uh, so that's, that's, and what's, what's important, even though um, Olivia weakened, you know, it's very important people, you know, after Olivia occurs and people go, oh, Olivia wasn't that bad, I'll forget about it until hurricane season 29. They, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people, in order to make a difference, to move the needle, to prevent 50,000 structures from being damaged or destroyed from a major hurricane, people got to think about these things all the time, and they got to think about it well, now. It's the new normal. And prepare, yeah. Before we, before we go to the break, I just want to ask you, what, you have an S there, and you have, can I go back to that picture? You have an S and a D. Okay. Uh, what, S, what does that signify? S stands for tropical storm. D is a tropical depression. Mm. So you'll see in, in this um, in this um, new in this these products from National Weather Service, they'll have either an M for major hurricane, H hurricane, S tropical storm, D tropical depression, and that's that's what it's projected to be. In the future, is the, is the wind shear phenomenon working now? I uh, think I think there's a little wind shear. It's it, and you know we we'd have to talk to the National Weather Service. There is some wind shear, but I don't think it's as strong as the wind shear that Lane encountered a few weeks ago. Mm. Could, could we go to one more slide, or do yeah, we need well, a break? well, let me ask you a question first, though, and that is, um, could we have a surprise northerly turn here? Uh, as it comes off Maui, could it turn to the north and, uh, and the center of that wind hit Oahu? Is that possible? Um, I think it's, it's, uh, slight, it's, prob it's not very possible. I mean, National Weather Service has, done, has a pretty good handle in the direction of Olivia for this system. And then even if it were to turn north, which it probably, it probably won't, um, it's, it's very unlikely that it'll intensify. So the winds right now are, are, I think they're 45 or 50 mile per hour sustained winds. It's not like a, it's like a weak tropical storm. It's not a, it's not a strong tropical yeah. storm like a cell yeah. was, yeah. So is it fair to say we've been through the worst of it uh, right now here at uh, almost 3.30? Well, it's hard to say because we're just talking about the winds now, and then there's the rain. The rain has, um, the rain bands um, have a larger extent than the wind. So there's still some impacts possible for, uh, you know, for the rain on Oahu. And we, we don't know exactly what's going on in Maui now. There, there is a fair amount of rain going on, right? right now so yeah, well, certainly plenty. in my yeah. house there's plenty of rain yeah okay we got any more pictures you want to go break now one last one maybe one last picture okay that's another picture huh that's okay this is okay. the same one okay this is another graph i i um that that um i use the, the three products that I find most useful for the National Weather Service are the cone of uncertainty with the wind field. And then this one is a tropical storm wind probability. They also have a hurricane uh, wind probability, but it shows at this point in time where the center of the system is. And say for Oahu, there's a, a colored bar or legend at the bottom. Um, so on Oahu, there's like a, a 40% chance, where the, that's where the yellow is, that yellow is. Mm -hmm. It's roughly a 40% chance that we'll get tropical storm winds on Oahu, okay? So I, I use that a lot. And then the other one I use a lot, I find very useful, is the expected arrival time of tropical storm winds. And this is all related to preparation. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so um, we're going to get the next report at 6 o'clock today? Uh, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. today. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll know then. I mean, they'll tell us then what, uh, what the estimated time of arrival is, I guess. Well, yeah. Well, um, they, they already, I mean, it's essentially arrived. Um, it's because arrived. It's, it's weakened. It's, a, it's weakened, uh, Olivia. That's why I'm it's feeling, I'm not feeling too bad about it. Because I, yes. I surmise that even in case of the rain, we've already seen the worst of it, uh, at least in my neighborhood. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. It's hard to say because there are rain bands and um, um, you could get no rain and then another rain band could come around. Oh, and, sure. And, and, concentric rain bands. Yeah, yeah, concentric rain bands. So uh, hard to say. Less, always listen to TV and, and radio for, for the... Because they, they, they're in tune with National Weather Service. I'm sort of like trying to give you a, a big picture of the risk yeah, very into the future. We all yeah. have to get And we're going to go even this. a little more into the future in the next part. We are. So. We're going to take a break first. We're going to come back and talk about the future and the connection of these storms all together yes. on a global basis. We'll be right back after this break. Okay, sure. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness.こんにちは。ティンクテックハワイが日本語でお届けする。こんにちは、ハワイの日本語放送のコスト国末ゆかりです。各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け
increasing the 70% chance by winter 2018 and 2019. So, and this all relates to, it relates to tropical cyclone activity too, or the hurricanes we're talking about. So, um, so we're about, there's a 70% chance we're about to go into an El Nino uh, by winter And when time. that happens, this extreme weather will become more extreme, right? Yes, well, let's continue on okay. to, with the story. You're giving me a lot of concern here, Dennis. Okay, well, I'm just trying to explain everything. So here is what um, El Nino looks like. Under normal conditions, there's normal trade winds, and they're, you can see off uh, the equator and off South America, their trade winds are moving the warm water to the west, okay? But during an El Nino, the trade winds weaken, and then the warm water along the equator um, does not move to the west, but collects and collects along South America and, and uh, the northern part of South America. And by the way, this is the breeding ground for all the Hurricanes. tropical cyclones. They all, they all come from that area off South America. Yeah, a lot of them form there, and then they travel to the west, right? To and us. To <laughs> us, right. So um, that's the significance of this. So can we have the next slide? Okay, so this is data from the National Weather Service from 1970 to 2017. And you can see the red years are El Nino, the blue years are La Nina, and the yellow is neutral. And you can see that the greatest number of tropical cyclones is during El Nino years, okay? So in 82, we had Eva, and that was it during an El Nino. In 1992, we had a Niki, that was during an El Nino. In 2015, we had what was called a Super El Nino, and the, the probably the strongest El Nino they ever had, with the greatest number of tropical cyclones we've ever had. Okay, so the and fortunately, we were very fortunate that they all managed to miss us. We were but, lucky. Yes. But and, th that doesn't last forever, I mean, even on a random basis. What's the difference and, between a cyclone and a hurricane? Okay. Um, it's, it's just terminology. A tropical cyclone includes a hurricane, a tropical storm, and a tropical depression. Tropical cyclone means forming over the tropics, you know, uh, zero to 22 degrees uh, latitude, and um, cyclonic Circular, circular circular action. Okay, but can we go back to that slide again? Yeah. Okay, so 2017, we had a super El Nino, and you can see there are 16 tropical cyclones. They think that that part may, that may have been related to climate change and the warmer, you know, it's, it's not, there's no consensus, but a lot of scientists think that it may be... You mean El Nino or the number of storms? The nu see how strong that El uh, the number... Well, the, the El Nino, they called it a super El Nino in 2015. It was, it was stronger than So that's previous. climate change made it into a super El Nino. It may, they, some people think it's that. It's bigger than any and, other and El then Nino it related, on and the then, chart. And then it led to those 16 tropical cyclones. Okay, and then in 2017, you see it's yellow, so we're going into neutral. In 2018, we're in blue, which is La Nina, but we're about to go into neutral again, and then we're about to go into an El Nino again. 20, to 2019, yeah. El Nino. And that's why I'm saying these, cycle, these cycles are gonna continue into the future. There's gonna be, and, and if it's related to cli climate change and warming, some of these El Ninos may be on get you know on fuel on gas or you know it's worse they're going to be worse so people got to prepare for this type of constant activity where where Hector is coming by and then Lane and then Olivia and you know it's it's it, it's the new it's, normal yeah it's it people got to realize that there is actual risk out there and they can't always count on these things missing us. Yeah. Let me just pin one thing down, Dennis. 
there's no question that the exacerbation of this weather is due to climate change, right? Well, it's hard to say. Because, I mean, there's so many scientists. See, um, definitely sea surface temperatures are warmer. So, because uh, there's always a question, does climate change lead to greater frequency and magnitude of storms? Most intuitively, you would say yes, because the sea surface temperatures are warmer, but a lot of scientists also say, well, when there's climate change, there's more wind shear, right? Remember wind shear is what tore Lane apart? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, there's just so many factors involved, but you know, you gotta take a look at the data itself too, and that may be telling you that, that there's a good likelihood that it could be happening. Mm. There's no consensus, but a lot of people think it is. Okay, you know, we've talked yeah. about complacency. Yeah. We've talked about the complacency of people in a highly populated area like Oahu. Um, do you have more slides? Let's do that. Okay, let's just go over next slide. Okay, so this was uh, the 2015 year during the, the Super El Nino. Um, and um, again, six, 15 or 16 tropical cyclones in the Pacific. Uh, and John Bravender, he was on your show with myself last week. Mm -hmm. And when, when people asked him, is there any way to explain all these systems missing us? Yeah. His answer was luck. Yeah. There's no reason these systems have, mi have missed us. There's, no, phys last forever, there's, there's no physical reason why <laughs> these systems have missed, all of, missed us. So, so and next the, year, our luck may turn. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, it's really, um, we gotta, people gotta be on their toes and prepared. What does that mean? We only have a minute left. What okay. does that mean? Okay, so they need to prepare properly so that they don't get hurricane fatigue. Um, you know, for instance, don't return your supplies. Your supplies you bought for Olivia, uh, keep them, mark them with a Sharpie with the expiration dates, use them for your 2019 hurricane season. If you're always going out to buy things and then returning them, you're gonna get hurricane fatigue. You know, everything you do should be, should consider both the short term and the long term, what you're doing. And you do the same thing for your water. You don't need to buy cases of water. Buy plastic containers, disposable plastic containers, or, or um, you know, that are always on hand. Okay. So this is all a ramp up. It's all a training. It's all a preparation time for yes. us to deal with the season, maybe 2019, in which we're not so lucky. And if we're lucky in 2019, well, there's always the years after that with more El Nino and more climate change right. and more extreme weather. Right. So you have to come back and tell us about it. I really appreciate you coming in today, Dennis. Sure, sure. This This kind of education is so important. People have to understand what's going on, not only in the short term, not only this afternoon, but in the long term. Right. We have a new normal, a new way of life, actually, in the world. Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much for coming down, Dennis. Oh, good to be here, Jay. Thanks. Next yeah. time soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha.